Good afternoon. My name is Joseph Lloyd and I source cars for people on a professional basis. Although most of the cars I source are between £1,000 and £5,000, very often I've been asked to show something a little bit cheaper on the channel and so I came up with No Budget Reviews, the series where we look at cars that you can buy in good condition with an MOT for under a thousand pounds and you can enjoy driving. We don't film this in an expensive manner, we don't use separate microphones, we don't use fluid head tripods, we don't even use a DSLR, but we do have a lot of fun. Well viewers, you know that we like a bit of luxury on this channel and we do have a certain affinity for the cheaper Volkswagen brands. And here we have a 2004 Skoda Superb 2.8 V6 Elegance. The Mark 1 to Superb is very similar to the B5 and B5.5 uh, Volkswagen Passats and indeed a version of the Passat with a long wheelbase was um, sold in China too. You can see it is the 2.8 V6 and I do like a nice smooth V6 engine in a car. Also we've got rear parking sensors which you know you're <laughs> going to need in a car like this. They are touch on the large side but the boot is is really big. It's about 472 litres I think in this car and you've got a nice superb boot mat and all kinds of evidence in here that this car was owned by somebody who was very, um, how to put this, Skoda, um, practical and also resourceful. Simon from Langley Prestige in Chelmsford, which is just down the road from here, um, has very kindly allowed me to drive this. You can see I've got my trade plates in today and he has recently acquired this. Now, it's not quite no budget reviews money. It's a little bit more than that, this car, because it's in right, quite nice condition. Um, but certainly you could pick these up for under a thousand pounds with an MOT, though no question really. One of the main reasons why you might buy a Skoda Superb of the first generation. We, of course, have covered a second generation one of these on the channel on sensible second hand reviews at the end of last year, is the amount of rear legroom, because there is absolutely loads of it. I put this seat into my drum position. I'm five foot eleven, and it is really no challenge for me to sit in here as if I am in a limousine. In fact, I've got limousine features, like I've got rear heated seats. We have a nice leather interior as well. What do I do if I happen to press this button here? Oh, we've got a oh, we've got an umbrella hiding in the rear armrest. Fantastic! That's what we like to see. All these little details. Just got to pull the armrest down. We've got some cup holders in here as well. Yes, we have. So got a ski hatch in here. If I can put this with one hand, yes, I can. There we go. We got through loading, and it has a little bag as well. So your stripping skis don't contaminate the um, lovely interior of your scooter. Superb. The headroom's a little bit limited um, in some ways. I mean, if I was uh, a little bit taller, I'd have to slouch a bit. But, I mean, it, if I just close the door, you know, it's got uh, things like um, a little bottle holder or um, compartment there for stuff. We've got an elegant-looking electric window switch. Nice cherry wood trim. I, I wish this was a beige leather interior. Um, that would be very nice, but uh, we'll have to settle for this. Um, Sort of grey leather instead, which feels nice. But the only thing that's not um, that nice is uh, the door car, but it's a bit hard. But this is a really cheap car. Like you get, I think there's more legroom in this than a Mercedes S Class of the same period. Certainly, it just it just looks lovely. I'm gonna have to. I think adjust that seat belt a little bit higher. There we go. There we go. Wow. This is this is brilliant, viewers. I, I'm, very much enjoying this. Uh, hmm, should I save up and get one of these myself? Let's get to the front and then we can talk more about it. 
Right, the lacquer is peeling slightly uh, um, in some places on this car for some reason, but it's still superb and it has remote releases for the fuel filler door and the boot there. Full complement of electric mirror switches, of course. Sorry, window switches and mirror which is um, the good old electric mirror switch that was used in Volkswagens for I don't know how long. So we've got this funny kind of control, um, device on here that was for fitting a steering wheel ball. I think the previous owner of this car must have had some mobility issues or something and so they like to drive with one hand. But, oh, look at all this wood viewers and we've got like a tape player and um, multi-stage heated seats and climate control and mm, oh, it's dripping with luxury features. Nice clear instruments of course, no problems there. Cruise control and stereo controls on the steering wheel. Standard Volkswagen parts from, you know, forever. Um, the cruise control activation switch is on the top of there. There is like a sort of Tiptronic mode, although I, I don't think in a car like this you'd probably use it too often. Nice conventional handbrake, which I don't need to use really because it's automatic anyway. And a nice uh, storage area in there with the cigarette lighter in there as well. That's very refined, isn't it? What does that do? Yes, and there's another compartment here for, um, I don't know, just multiple, multiple sort of cables for things. Let's see if the secret mission documents go into the glove box. No problem at all. Why did I ever doubt that in a car like this? So yes, uh, side airbags, curtain airbags, front airbags, um, nice big sunroof. I'm, I'm not going to touch that uh, because I don't really want that to break on me. You know what it's like with old cars and sunroofs. Is there a compartment here? Ooh, it's, oh, it's a cherry veneer compartment for all kinds of little spy things. Mm, 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 mm. I do like this car, viewers, very much. The only thing I would say, I, I think it might have range-sensing wipers in this elegance trim. However there's no automatic headlamps, which I think is a bit of a first world problem to be honest, but nevertheless we'll mention it anyway. Uh, yes, you, you could get a an manual gearbox in these cars, but this is an automatic, I think it suits the character of this engine. Let's have a look under the bonnet. One thing I must point out is the car does need to have these headlamps mopped back a bit, they are a bit cloudy. So many cars of the early 2000s have uh, you know, this issue, and uh, Superb's no exception really. There we go. There is the V6, which looks to me like it's longitudinally mounted. Excellent. Same basic platform as uh, the first generation Audi A4 as well, and all its variants. That uh, coolant reservoir might be familiar to a lot of people. Um, plenty of plenty of coolant in there today. You can see it's nice and clean. Bizarrely, that. That, I think, is the brake fluid reservoir at the top of there. That's interesting. Yes, not a lot of room to work on um, this engine particularly. Um, not a lot of room at all. That's obviously one thing to uh, to bear in mind. But the rest of the things look easy enough to sort of reach if you need to. And, of course, we have a hydraulic bonnet strut. Like in all the best cars, we have hydraulic bonnet struts. Fantastic. I think it's time to go for a drive. Well, here we go, viewers. Oh, oh, oh. Let's put the window up. Yes, please. I mean, my camera mount shaking around and everything, but, you know, that's just the way it goes on this channel. Um, oh, I like... I like this. <laughs> oh, this is, thing is quite fast. I mean, it's going to drink fuel and everything, but response is, is brilliant. One thing I'm aware of, of course, as you would have seen, is 
is this little knob on the steering wheel that's actually the, the knob the uh, person who previously owned this car would have used to drive it with one hand. Um, I imagine they had some kind of um, mobility issue or something like that. That's why they needed a steering wheel ball on it. But, wow. Yes. I do like this car very much, viewers. So, the engine's available in a Mark 1 Skoda Superb. It's pretty simple, really, but we're only three. The first one was a 2-litre engine with 115 horsepower. second one was a turbocharged 1.8 with 180 horsepower. And then there was this 2-litre V6 with 193 horsepower. There are also some <clears throat> diesels, but due to controversial government legislation and other reasons, we don't talk about diesels on this channel. The trim levels available in a Mark 1 Skoda Superb were classic, comfort, elegance, and then after the facelift, which occurred in about 2006, there was the Lauren and Clement edition, which was the ultra luxury model. We like ultra luxury on this channel. There's also an edition 100 special edition, um, which I think coincided with Skoda's 100 years as a manufacturer. That's about it. It's quite a simple engine and um, trim lineup. I do apologise for the uh, camera shaking a bit. That's just the sort of way it goes on this channel and, um, you know, I think if we didn't have that, it wouldn't be a proper episode of No Budget Reviews, would it? Now, my camera mount is in the way because it always is on these videos and uh, we've got the dealer plate just out of shot. One thing we don't have is a uh, windscreen wiper blade for the driver, which uh, you'll notice, um, notice there. The car just feels very solid, easy to drive, very luxurious, cover huge distances in a car like this without any problems. Of course, it's got <laughs> electric heated memory seats, so it's obviously a good thing. Well, I do think fuel economy about 25 to 29 miles per gallon it wouldn't be for everyone. But yes, um, I think I do like this car quite a lot, viewers, and I think that's quite obvious. And uh, once again, I'm sorry about the camera mount shaking and the poor lighting. That's just the way it goes on no budget reviews. So, viewers, should you buy a Mark 1 Skoda Superb V6? Well, I think this car is absolutely fantastic. I've really enjoyed driving it. Um, it's a bit annoying knocking my hand every time um, on this um, remains of what was a steering wheel ball. But, wow, it's quite fast. <laughs> um, you can get some more economical engines, but that's not as much fun. It's very well equipped. The rear space is amazing, so is the boot. And it's even got a nice little ski hatch. I have really taken with this car and of course I think it's going to be available soon um, for sale at Langley Prestige. I think I'm going to have to be very careful to uh, just uh, keep my hand away from my wallet when thinking about this car. Anyway, thank you ever so much indeed for watching this episode of No Budget Reviews. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel, don't forget to like this video and to leave a comment below. The social media links are in the description below. And uh, if you could switch on notifications to be informed of new uploads, that'd be brilliant. Thank you ever so much indeed once again.